Hey everyone, so this video was originally posted up on my Patreon page a few weeks ago if you would like to get some more exclusive videos, some early access videos, as well as access to some demos, both past and present, then I'll leave a link down below where you can sign up, even just £1 a month helps me stay a creator full time and it's really really appreciated, so link down below. Thank you. So today I want to talk about my experience with CFS stroke ME. I've always just called it chronic fatigue syndrome. Apparently there's a bit of debate about which term should be used. I've always just said CFS. I think it just really appropriately sums up everything that people need to know about it when I talk about my condition without sort of taking away from what it is by using a long word that I struggle to pronounce. For those of you who haven't seen my previous videos on chronic fatigue syndrome, I'll fill you in really, really quickly. So I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome when I was 23, but I've been having symptoms of the syndrome since I was about 17 years old. When I was 17, I contracted glandular fever. I was just about to start my job at McDonald's, which is why I remember it, because they put me on probation for having glandular fever. Anyway, so I was diagnosed with glandular fever and my doctor prescribed me an antibiotic called amoxicillin, which is a strain of penicillin. It turned out that I was allergic to penicillin and my face swelled up like a balloon. I had rashes all over my body. I basically tripled in size and it took ages for the swelling to go down. Amoxicillin made me very, very sick. And after that, all of my energy was just completely zapped from me. My skin was going gray. Um, I was having to sleep two or three times a day. And even the most like, menial tasks left me out of breath, um, just constantly tired. I needed to nap after like going shopping or even washing up, I'd have to sort of just take a little break. So I'm now 28, so I've had it for 11 years. Even though I was diagnosed like six years later, I am fully aware that I had it. I'm fully confident that I had CFS as a result of my allergic reaction to amoxicillin. What I will quickly state is not enough research has been done into the correlation between having a reaction to amoxicillin and the start of chronic fatigue syndrome but it has been widely reported from people who've had similar experiences um, so I'm not a doctor I can't say you know don't do this don't take this refuse this but I think the medical world really needs to look into this I've seen comments on forums I've seen comments from you guys in my previous videos about this we've had the exact same situation where you've had an allergic reaction and then you suffer with chronic fatigue syndrome I really really hope that more research is done into it because it's a horrible debilitating syndrome now as for my update I think I posted an update like three years ago or so over on one of my side channels and I said back then that a lot of my symptoms had alleviated things have got better, I've learned to cope with it better and I would say to this day that's still quite true in comparison to when I first started getting the symptoms as well as when I was uh, first diagnosed with it I was still napping two or three times a day when I was about 23, 24 especially when I switched to a vegan diet it made me very very ill I know I get asked a lot about why I'm no longer vegan. I know that I wasn't necessarily doing the vegan diet the, the most efficient way. I know I wasn't getting the complete amino acid profile. At the time I was very uneducated about it, but I, it made me even more sick. I had absolutely no color in my skin whatsoever. But I would say in the last few years or so, it has continued to get better. Um, scientists and doctors, they will say, and this is obviously true, uh, chronic fatigue never fully goes away. Um, it is something that people struggle with all their lives once they've contracted it. I say contracted, it's not a virus, you can't catch it from anybody else. But I would say that to this day, like every single day of my life, there is still this underlying tiredness. Um, today is a very, very good energy day for me, um, but there's still this tiredness behind my eyes. I could still lay down here on my sofa and close my eyes and just... I could sleep for a couple of hours. Even though I don't feel extremely fatigued today, there's always that ability to sleep. Um, I like to jokingly call it my superpower, um, but it can be very, very inconvenient. So, you know, when I bust that joke out, it kind of depends on the situation. But the reason I wanted to make this video today is because I posted up on my Patreon yesterday about having a terrible day. Um, whilst my terrible days, the amount of terrible days that I have has lessened and the extent of my fatigue has lessened on the, the back bad days. Um, yesterday was absolutely horrific. Um, it stemmed from doing, I've, been, I've upped my exercise recently, I've reduced the amount of calories that I've been eating recently uh, because of the heat and also because I, I'm, I would like to be more in control of my body shape. Um, but it, it has had a bit of a knock-on effect and I knew it would, but I, on, on top of 
those two things, I had a very disturbed night's sleep last night. Um, I went to bed quite late because I was working on some music and then like dead on seven o'clock, my neighbors started watering their garden at <laughs> seven, seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and then my cat was going absolutely crazy. Every time I was falling asleep, she was meeping, running around. She loves her 6 a.m. zoomies, which is great. Um, and then I, I woke up about midday, absolutely drained. Like I was so, so, so groggy. And then I fell asleep until about 3 p.m. when my dad phoned me and woke me up. So I was woken up a multiple amount of times yesterday. Um, and that was very, very, very hard on my body in terms of fatigue. Um, my bad days consist primarily of uh, what they call a brain fog or mind fog. Basically, it is this complete mental confusion. Uh, I forced myself to get up and go and do some food shopping and I was completely disorientated. Um, I couldn't work out where I was, where I was going at times. I couldn't do simple things like move out of people's way. Um, I couldn't remember where like the salads were or anything like that. It was such a confusion that I ended up getting back in the car and I just cried. Um, fatigue also makes me extremely emotional uh, as everyone feels when they're extremely tired I know that people with CFS are not the only people who suffer with being fatigued sometimes it's just the chronic part that makes CFS so difficult um, but I, I just ended up a complete uh, ball of tears I, I was just a complete mess um, it was extremely difficult so fortunately when we got home my partner um, he cooked for me he let me just lie on the sofa um, he did everything for me because he knows how bad it can get sometimes he says to me he knows when I'm about to start having fatigue because it doesn't just happen to me when I wake up in the morning it's like oh it's a bad fatigue day sometimes I can be okay I can have an okay day and then towards like mid late afternoon um, he says my skin can go gray um, the bags under my eyes become extremely dark and he said that's a really good telltale sign for him to know when I just need to have a rest and take a break um, I'm very very fortunate to have him in my life he's so attentive um, and he just he puts me to bed um, lets me just have a little bit of TV on and you know he just takes care of everything um, it's it, it really is a joy to have a partner who truly understands and and listens and knows my body um, but going back to the whole uh, 11 years on thing overall I, I don't sleep as much uh, these days during the day I still have naps during the day sometimes um, because like I said it never fully goes away but the amount has decreased so there is hope I believe every case is individual um, and everyone goes from mild to moderate to severe everyone's on a different scale um, my symptoms are usually mild to moderate um, I don't have severe ME stroke CFS but I would say overall over the last 11 years my condition has got better um, it will never fully be cured and I'm fully aware of that until medical science finds what actually causes CFS properly what actually happens in the body to affect our energy a lot of research in the last few years has been done uh, which is fantastic news there have been more reports on it there have been more uh, research and more like, trials of things uh, which is fantastic for people who who live with CFS ME um, but I would say, yeah, things things have improved, uh, still have bad days, still have okay days that then turn into, you know, difficult evenings. But, you know, I, I would like to say with a pinch of salt, Salt Bay, um, that's old, isn't it? Um, that I think there is hope, I think, um, at least in my case. So, that's really about it. Um, CFS can be very hard to live with at times. You don't get to pick and choose when you're going to be tired, you know, um, when you're going to get dizzy, when you're going to get lightheaded and need to sit down. You could be in a crowded place where there's nowhere to rest. You could be somewhere where you can't get home and lie down. You could be somewhere where it needs your full mental attention and then you can just feel it seeping away. Um, you can have a day where you need to do like lots of meetings or you need to get some filming done, you know, or, or whatever the uh, equivalent would be to everyone else's lives. And um, you just wake up and you realize, oh God, I can't do it. I can't do it today and you have to let people down. It's not easy to live with and the amount of stigma that is that surrounds this illness because it is a invisible illness such as, you know, just like fibromyalgia. It's difficult. The stigma alongside of it is is tough. Um, I was fortunate that I, I didn't have to fight tooth and nail for a diagnosis. I didn't have to go through extensive, extensive uh, doctor's visits. Uh, I had to have a couple of blood tests. 
Um, and then my doctor was like, well, it's obvious that you have this. I was very fortunate to have a doctor that believed that it is a real condition. Unfortunately, there are still doctors out there who don't. And they, you know, um, I'm, I'm fine with doctors trying everything else beforehand. Um, I was tested for like anemia, um, thyroid issues. And once they came back negative, then my doctor said, well, it's obvious that you have this. Um, I don't have a problem with doctors trying everything else and trying to find a real, like, real <laughs> physical um, way of explaining your symptoms. But there is still a long way to go in the uh, medical industry, in my opinion. And it's only until that side of things makes CFS sufferers believed that I believe the general population will come around uh, and, and it will be widely accepted as an issue. Uh, the amount of times I've just been called lazy or uh, the amount of times I was told at work or school or college, oh, why don't you just go to bed earlier, um, isn't the case. Um, sometimes you can get, you know, a good eight hours sleep and wake up exhausted. You can get 12 hours sleep and then people say, oh, well, you slept too long. You can try and reduce it. Oh, you didn't sleep enough. Um, it can be very, very, you know, degrading to live with. Um, that's really all I have for an update. I'll do another update as and when people request it, um, but I have been doing better. It's, it isn't a case of um, really doing anything necessarily to treat it. Um, I've gone through times where I've eaten healthier and haven't really felt any benefits. There have been times where I've eaten worse and haven't felt any benefits or uh, negatives from it. Um, people say do exercise, which is very difficult, but I have done exercise to try and alleviate it and that hasn't uh, had any impact on my, my, uh, my fatigue. So if you do know someone with CFS stroke ME, uh, please do be aware that they suffer a lot. Don't know if you can hear that alarm going off. But they do suffer, and a lot of the time they suffer in silence because of the stigma surrounding uh, the condition. So please just be gentle with them, and if you see any sort of uh, like discoloration in the face, if you see their, um, their colour drain from their face, then please be aware that could be a symptom that they're about to have what I call a fatigue attack, but what other people might call something different. Um, please just be understanding that maybe they do need to sit down, maybe they do need to like grab a coffee. Obviously once the pandemic's over, they don't, don't go out for coffee just yet. But just be 